Hey folks, Richard Ames here again with another video on producing music for the virtual orchestra. And today I'm going to show you how to use Lemur to control track visibility in Cubase. So I'll take you through step by step on how to set up some project logical editor presets, some macros, and the generic remote within Cubase, along with some very simple Lemur scripting in order to generate an array of buttons that allow you to control things like the visibility of folder tracks, uh, the ability to show tracks with data at the current cursor location, and a host of other functions. What this tutorial will not show you is how to establish the link between your tablet and your computer. So there are a bunch of other good tutorials out there on the web on setting up Lemur and establishing that connection. So you might want to go check that out before you get into this tutorial. But I will take you step by step on how to set up everything else so that at the end you'll have an understanding of how to create an array of buttons that control all of the track visibility features within Cubase. Let me start off with a demonstration of what it is that I'm going to show you how to create. So here's a typical track that uses my full orchestral template, and all of the tracks right now are collapsed into their respective folders. So for example, here are the LA Scoring Strings tracks collapsed into the last folder. And down here on the bottom left, this is the Lemur project running on my tablet that I use to control my standard orchestral template. Now all of the buttons and sliders up here on the top are instrument specific controls that I'm not covering in this tutorial. What I'm going to talk about in this tutorial are the buttons down here on the bottom left that control the track visibility. So you see each of these buttons corresponds to one of the folder tracks within my project. So right now LAS is visible, I can turn it off, it disappears on the screen, the button goes dark, Likewise, I can turn off the VSL strings. I can go on down through my orchestral template and turn all the tracks off. Now I can turn them back on. I have it set up by default so that when a particular library is turned on, it unfolds the track. So I turned on last, it came back unfolded. Let me turn on the Cinebrass, it also comes back unfolded. Um, one of the nice things within Cubase is that it has some built-in functions that will identify which tracks have data on them and hide those that do not. So I've created a button that links to that. So the tracks with data button, when I press it, will show me only the tracks that have data in the current project. Likewise, I have a data at cursor button that calls the command that shows me only the tracks that have data at the current cursor location. I can also define a region and call the Cubase command that says, show me the tracks that have data in that region. I've got a button for that one as well. Now, one of the other handy features that I've set up here is this solo view button. And the way that works is when, you, when the solo view button is active and you select a library, it will show you only that library. So instead of adding the library to the currently visible tracks, it will show you only that library that you have selected. One of the other things that you can do that's real handy to get back to a sort of baseline configuration is hit the All Tracks and then Fold All button, and that gets you back to that nice compact representation of your full orchestral template. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you how to use some macros, some project logical editor presets, and the generic remote within Cubase along with some simple scripting in Lemur to create this kind of functionality. Okay, the first thing you want to do is get organized, and the best way to do that is to start with the track template and work from there. This template will be the basis of a lot of decisions and work that follow, so spend some time thinking about what collections of tracks you want to hide and show as a group. A little extra time here really does go a long way. Arrange the tracks into groups that are contained in folder tracks and put a unique identifier in each track name, both for the folder track name and for the MIDI track name. You can see the setup I use here in my orchestral template. I separate the groups by library or instrument type. For example, here are my chorus tracks, sopranos, altos, tenors, basses, contained within this chorus folder track. And each of these tracks has the identifier pound VX, again, both on the individual MIDI tracks and on the folder track itself. For LA scoring strings, I use the identifier pound LS. For VSL strings, I use the identifier pound VS. Now, you don't necessarily have to use these folder tracks, but they are a convenient way to collapse a number of other tracks into a single track that shows you what's going on within that group. So I find them extremely useful. You'll also need a spreadsheet 
to keep track of all the assignments that you're making. So for example, over here on the left, these are all the track visibility keys that I use in my template. Again, VX for the chorus, pound VS for the VSL strings, etc. on down through the orchestra. You'll also be assigning CCs to a variety of parameters, both for the visibility groups and for things like transpose within uh, the MIDI editor, set quantize values, all of those sorts of things, and then transport functions, those sorts of things. So. Uh, a, a nice spreadsheet is a good way to keep track of all of this information. Here's an example of the spreadsheet that I use. This one's about six and a half years old at this point, so it gives you an idea of how handy it can be. All right, so you've done all your planning and created a template master spreadsheet to keep track of everything. The next thing you need to do is set up your MIDI ports. First of all, this drove me bonkers for several hours one day, so pay attention. Make sure you're not using CCs on the ports dedicated to track quick controls and VST quick controls in Cubase. You find those under the devices menu, go to device setup, and then under remote devices, you'll see track quick controls and VST quick controls. Cubase uses a number of dedicated CCs for these quick controls. So if these MIDI ports are connected to something, you can't use these CCs for other functionality. So you have two options. Either you can leave them disconnected, which is what I've done since I don't use the quick controls, or you need to make a note of which CCs Cubase is using for the quick controls. And then over in your master spreadsheet, you need to block them out so that you know that they're not available for other functionality. So. Pay attention to the CCs used in the quick controls. Like I said, that caused me a number of headaches. Okay, on to the MIDI ports. I use two MIDI ports in this setup. There's one pair to and from the instrument controllers, and then another pair to and from the transport. There's a third one here for the key switch sync, but I'm not covering that in this tutorial. Basically what that lets you do is if you select a track in Cubase, it will automatically send the identifier to lemur so it knows which key switches to use. Like I said, not covering that here, so don't worry about that. Okay, the two from controllers pair is the port that sends data to the individual VST instruments. So this port contains all the information like expression, dynamics, AB select, all of those sorts of things, attack, release, that go to the individual instruments, not necessarily to Cubase. The to from transport pair I use for things like transport controls, so stop, rewind, fast forward, record, and also for all of the track visibility commands, because things like transport controls, visibility commands don't need to go to the individual instruments, they need to go to Cubase. So that's why I've separated them out this way. Then what you need to do within the device manager, in the device setup here, on your MIDI port setup, those ports that go to and from the transport and then also the key switch sync here, you need to remove from the in all MIDI inputs column. Basically what that does is it prevents that MIDI information from being sent to the individual instrument tracks. Setting it up this way prevents headaches later on when you're trying to figure out why some instrument is behaving strangely. It might be because it's reacting to your transport control data. All right, now we're on to what is easily the most complicated part of this effort, setting up the project logical editor presets and macros in Cubase. So this is complicated, but stick with me, we'll get through it. So first let's create project logical editor presets to show and hide each group you defined in your spreadsheet. For each group, you're gonna need three presets, one to show the group, one to hide it, and one that calls a macro function. I'll explain why we need that in a little while. You'll also need a few additional presets for some other tasks. So let's pull up the project logical editor and see how these are set up. So if you've never used it before, the project logical editor is located under the edit menu. Go to project logical editor and there it is. And what I've done is created a couple of directories for the presets that I use. So up here at the top, you'll see a macro directory and then below that, the track visibility directory. So let's start here. So let me pull up one of these track visibility settings and step you through it. So let's pull up the hide BD setting right here. So here is the hide pound BD setting. And basically what this does is up here at the top, it defines some conditions. And then down at the bottom, it defines an action that is taken upon whatever it finds that meets these conditions. So in this case, the condition is media type is a MIDI track and the name contains 
pound BD. So it's saying if you find a track in the project, a MIDI track in the project that has pound BD in the track name, then do this. And the do this is track operation, hide track, enable. So basically what this whole, this whole thing is saying is if you find a MIDI track that contains pound BD in the name, hide it. Pretty straightforward. So if you go to the hide CB, you see everything is exactly the same except this parameter one right here, which is now pound CB because that's the identifier for the CB group. Likewise, if you go to the CG group, it's all exactly the same except the identifier is now pound CG. So you need one of these for each of the track groups that you defined. Likewise, for the show macro, the show presets, Let's go to the show BD preset here. This is almost exactly the same. So again, media type is equal to MIDI, name contains pound BD. But this time, instead of enabling the hide track, you are disabling the hide track because you want to show the track. So essentially what this one is saying is, if you find a MIDI track with a name that contains pound BD, then disable the hide. In other words, show all of the MIDI tracks that have pound BD in the name. Likewise, if you go to the show CB, again, everything is the same except you include the CB identifier this time. And the pattern continues on down through all of the visibility groups that you've defined. There are two more visibility presets that I use to hide some of the non-MIDI tracks. And they're necessary because sometimes you can get into situations, especially with that solo view button that I showed you, where you're trying to show only one particular collection of tracks, but some of these non-MIDI tracks, like the VST instruments, FX channels, group tracks, show up as well. So you need to have a specific preset within the project logical editor to hide these tracks and then call that track, uh, that preset, as part of one of the macros that I'll show you in a minute. So again, these are still under the project logical editor. So let's open that back up and let's pull up, for example, this hide non MIDI tracks preset. And basically what this does is it says MIDI type is equal to device track, which includes effects channels and group tracks and audio track, automation track, and whatever though, whenever you find a track like that, hide it. So that's what this particular preset does. And you can pick other ones here. So you can add another one, make sure you make them all or conditions. And then you can choose a different type of track here. So automation, marker, transpose, whatever. So if you just wanna hide different types of things, when you go into that solo view mode, you add them here. However, you can't use this approach to hide VST instrument tracks. So you have to have a dedicated logical editor preset for that. And the only way that I've found to do that is to look within the name for VST instruments because this VST instruments folder track over here that contains all of the outputs from VE Pro is always named VST instruments. So you can take this one and hide it by name. And again, the reason you need these two visibility uh, controls right here is because sometimes you wind up with situations where these types of tracks don't get hidden when you're trying to isolate one particular group. So we'll be using those in the macros that I'm going to show you in the next section. The macros within Cubase are kind of hidden within the key command dialog box. So if you go up to the file menu, go down to the key commands dialog box, down here at the bottom, there's this show macros button. And if you click on that, it'll show you all the macros that are currently associated with this particular set of key commands. If you've never made a macro before, let me step you through how to do it real quickly. So down here on the right, you see this new macro button. So click on that. It'll pop up over here in this left window, let you give it a name. Let's duplicate one of the ones that's already there. So show pound VX, we'll call it underscore B so we don't get confused. Hit enter, and now you've got a macro, but there are no commands assigned to it yet. And the way you assign the commands is through this command list up here in the, in the top. So this lists all of the commands that you're able to assign to this macro. And if you remember, the first thing we wanna do is hide the MIDI tracks as part of this macro. So that was one of the project logical editor presets that we created. So it's under this folder. And in this folder, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's built in that comes with Cubase. And then here are all those hide and, and show presets that we created already. So here's the hide non MIDI tracks one that we created. So you click on that, you click add command, and it will add that to the current macro. We also wanna hide the VST instruments, click add command. It will also add that one. Now we wanna show the VX group. So there's the preset we already created. Click on that, 
click add command, it'll add it there. And then again, I like to unfold the tracks when I do this, and there's a built-in function for that. If you don't know where it is, you can search for it with this handy box up here. So let's look for unfold. There it is, it's part of the project folder. So folding unfold tracks, click on that command, click add command, and now you've got a new macro that includes these four commands. So what you need to do now is create one of these show macros for each of the groups you've defined. There are also four macros in here for other functions. So this is the one that shows tracks with data at the cursor. This is the one that shows tracks with data in the region. This is the one that shows tracks with data anywhere in the project. And this is the one that shows only selected tracks. So if you look at this data at cursor macro, you'll see the first thing I do is I call the Cubase function that shows the tracks with data at the current position, but then I still have to hide the VST instruments because sometimes those pop up uh, even when you don't want them to, and then I have it unfold the tracks again. That's personal preference. I like to do it that way. Uh, for the data in region, it's basically exactly the same thing. There's a channel and track visibility agent that does that, but again, you got to hide the VST instruments and then unfold them. Same thing with tracks with data. Show me tracks with data, hide the VST instruments, unfold them. And finally, the exact same thing with show selected tracks only. So the final thing that you have to do is back in the project logical editor. So let's open this up again. As I mentioned, there's this macros collection of presets right here. And the reason you have to do this, so I'll pull up this show pound BD macro. The reason you have to do this is that you can't directly access the macros from the generic remote. Remember, that's the link back to lemur. Cubase lets you link the generic remote to a macro, but it doesn't actually work. But what you can do is you can access a project logical editor preset like this one that does nothing except call this macro. It's a convoluted way of working and not the way it's supposed to work, but it's the only way that I've found to make it work. So for each of your groups and those four additional track visibility macros, you need to create another project logical editor preset that does nothing but call those macros. Okay, you still with me? The good news is the worst of it is behind us. The last thing we need to do within Cubase is define the links between the buttons on the Lemur project and the CC values that it sends, and the macros and logical editor presets we've created within Cubase. And the way we do that is through the generic remote. So if you go up to the Devices menu, click Device Setup, and then we'll click on this plus button right here, and we're going to add a generic remote. So when we do that, you see it's added this one here called Generic Remote 3. And unfortunately, it populates it with a bunch of defaults that are not easy to delete. You've got to delete them one by one, so I'll fast forward the video while I do that. And now we have an empty generic remote ready for us to assign our command. So the first thing you want to do is check the, the ports here, the MIDI port. So remember, we're using this from lemur transport and to lemur transport pair to send all of the track visibility information, also the transport data as well, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to now add a command to this generic remote. So over here, I'll click Add. Let's start with one of the... Uh, show commands, the data at cursor command. It is indeed a controller, so that's what I'm going to use along with MIDI channel one. And which CC am I using for my data at cursor command? Well, let me go consult my handy spreadsheet. And it turns out it is CC52 that I have defined as my data at cursor controller. So I'll come back here. Make sure that's set to 52, and then it is receiving from the lemur project, so I need to set the flag to receive. Then down here in the um, command window, the command box, the control name changes when you click on it, and click on device. This is going to be a command. This is going to be a project logical editor preset that I'm going to call, and then the particular project logical editor preset that I'm calling is the data at cursor macro. So what, what I've done right here is I've said, when you receive CC52 on this MIDI port, execute this command. So that's what the generic remote does, is it takes an input and it assigns it to a command. So let's add another one for one of the show commands. So I added one, let's do show 
LS. That's my last group. Again, it's a controller, MIDI channel one. Which channel or which CC does that use? Let me go back here. So last is on CC 58. So come back here, change this to 58. Down in the command window, when I click on it, it changes the name. Again, this is a command. Again, I'm going to process project logical editor preset. And the one I'm going to call LS is my last group. I'm going to call the show pound ls macro. And again, you're calling the macro here, not the individual command. Remember, you call the macro, and then the macro calls this show ls command along with some other things that it does. So click on that. Now you've got the other one there. So what you need to do is in each of the, for each of your groups and those other four visibility commands, add a generic remote command and then assign it to the appropriate macro, making sure you also assign the appropriate CC that you're keeping track of in your master spreadsheet. Okay, almost done. The last thing we need to do is create a lemur project with a bunch of buttons to generate the CCs that we've assigned to all of the macros within Cubase. Now, this is not a full-on lemur tutorial, but what we need to do is relatively straightforward. So you should be able to follow along without too much difficulty. So let's go over to the lemur, lemur project. I've created a blank project here. You can see the blank screen on my tablet. I've got a white background here just to help with some of the reflections off the screen. And what I'm going to do is add a custom button to this project. So let me increase the size a little bit so it's easier to see. And I'll use this one to control the visibility of the LA scoring strings tracks. So the first thing I want to do is make sure the behavior is set to switch and not pad. Switch stays on when you turn it on and stays off when you turn it off. A pad is only on while your finger is on the button. So we want to control visibility with this. So we want switch behavior. So let's add some text to it. The off text is last off. The on text is last on. And then what I need to do is assign two functions to this button. So come over here, make sure the button is selected. I'll add a script on activate. And I'll add a second script on deactivate. Let me go to the on activate script. I need to set the execution here to on expression X and the rising arrow. And what that means is when the button is activated, do the script that's shown in this window right here. And what I wanted to do is send a controller out. So I'll use the CTL out command. Now this first number identifies the to from lemur transport MIDI port that we discussed earlier. In my case, I use number one to identify that port. So you need to make sure that you use the number that is appropriate to your particular MIDI port setup. Now, which controller do I want to send to make last visible? Well, let me consult my spreadsheet. So it is CC58 that I'm using to show last. So 58 to the value of 127. And the last number is the channel you selected in the generic remote. And now I go to deactivate and I do a similar thing. The execution is on expression X, but instead of the rising arrow, this time I pick the descending arrow, which indicates that the button is deactivated. Again, I want to send a controller out. Which controller do I want to use to turn the last tracks off? Well, that's CC78, hide last. So 78, 127, 1, and close that out. Okay. So now I have a button that sends CC58 when activated and CC78 when deactivated. So that should show and hide my LA scoring strings tracks within Cubase. So here I am in Cubase. I've got all of my uh, template loaded up here. And right now it's not in sync because I haven't hit any buttons on the tablet yet. So it doesn't know that the tracks are on. There's no way to communicate that information. But if I turn it on, you can see indeed the LA scoring strings tracks are on. It also unfolds everything. If you remember that's personal preference, I like to have the tracks unfold when I enable the button. So here's the LA scoring strings. It's on right now. I turn it off. Indeed, it turns off. Turn it on, turns it all back on again. So that's button. that button is working as it should. Let's go back to the lemur project. Let's add another button. And this time, let's use this to fold up the tracks. So this will use the track folding commands. So I've got another button, but this time I want it to be a pad and not a switch because this doesn't stay on. You hit the button, it folds the tracks one time and that's it. So let's add some text to it. Fold and 
fold. And then I need to add another script to it. Make sure the correct button is selected here. Add a script to it on activate. And similarly, I need to set the execution to on expression X. I use the rising arrow to indicate when the button is activated. And I want to send out a controller. And which controller am I using to fold the tracks? Let me consult my spreadsheet. CC54 is fold all tracks. So 154 at 127, one. Okay, and that's it. So now I have a button that sends CC54 when I hit it. So if I go back to the project, everything's unfolded right now. If I hit the fold button, indeed it folds everything back up. So again, I can, LAS is still on, I can turn LAS off. When I turn LAS back on, by default I have it set to unfold. So I can fold everything back up again by hitting that button. So what you can do now is within the Lemur project, create a button for each one of those macros that you created within Cubase, and you'll have a way to control all of that functionality from your tablet. So there you go. I started using a tablet about a month or so ago and have found it extremely valuable as a workflow enhancer. My goal in using the tablet was not to reproduce the key commands I already use on the computer keyboard, things like G and H to zoom, the F buttons to control the mixer, and the VST instrument windows. I wanted to add functionality that I didn't currently have on the computer keyboard. The computer keyboard is compact, it's wireless, it's well integrated into the DAW. There's no reason to reproduce those functions on the tablet, but to add things things like visibility controls, key switches, and then sliders for other types of controllers, that's a big workflow enhancement. So hopefully this video gave you some idea on how you can go about doing that using logical editor presets, macros, the generic remote, and Cubase, and then it really only takes some simple scripting within Lemur to make it work. So hopefully you'll find some good tips in here and find some improvements that you can incorporate into your workflows.